In this video, I'll be talking about Ether SX2, a brand new PS2 emulator on Android. Specifically, we're going to talk about the underclocking feature that can help games that run slowly or poorly to run with improved performance. So right now I'm working on my PS2 analysis video for the Odin handheld, and I've been using the underclocking feature to help improve performance. So rather than take 5 minutes in the PS2 video to talk about it, I figure I would just make it its own video and do a little bit more in-depth analysis. We're going to use Soul Calibur 2 and go through the underclocking settings and I'll show you what they look like and talk about the performance. Now, do bear in mind, underclocking doesn't always result in improved performance and there's quite a bit of trial and error process involved. So even if you understand the concepts and process, it doesn't mean underclocking is going to work every time. It's also dependent on the game and how it reacts to slower clock speeds. If your game is currently running slow, you may want to try underclocking the emulated PS2 CPU. That means that if the PS2 clock speed was 300MHz, you can try to run the PS2 at a lower speed, say 200MHz. This has the effect of pushing out a higher, more playable frame rate. Sometimes running a lower emulator clock speed can break a game because the game is coded to run at the default speed. But there are also lots of times when a lower PS2 clock speed can run fine. You won't know until you try it out. There are two options for underclocking in Ether SX2. EE cycle rate and EE cycle skip. EE cycle rate is reducing the clock speed of the emulated PS2. So if the game is running slow for you, for example you have a slow processor that's below the recommended Snapdragon 845, or you have a very demanding game, you can try to reduce the clock speed here. The option also allows you to overclock the PS2 as well, and where this might come in handy is if the original game was slow and overclocking the CPU pushes out a higher frame rate. In the games I've tested so far, this is pretty rare, you'd have to find a game that has a section with slowdown or a game that's consistently slow. EE Cycle Skip essentially has the effect of a frame skip like we see with other emulators. Skipping frames means less work gets sent to the GPU, but can mean animations are missing, but the game feels faster. If you have to turn both of these on to the maximum setting, you're probably running into experimental territory just to see if the game works, rather than anything actually enjoyable for playing, in my opinion. This is a table with results of the testing and some comments on the performance that you can return to at any time to make sense of it all. I'm using the Power ROM here which limits the FPS to 50. There's two tables here, one with the toggle frame rate limit on which applies a 50 FPS cap and limits the CPU usage, and toggle frame rate limit off which allows the CPU to run as fast as possible. So let's start with showing you the default settings on an Odin and everything is in high performance mode on the Odin for this video. On default settings, the game runs at about 40 FPS and feels really slow. It's no fun to play a fighter like this because while in some games 40 FPS is playable, here it feels like you're playing 20% slower. Let's change the EE cycle rate to 75% and see how it goes. Now it's a little bit faster and smoother, but it's still not quite good enough in my opinion. Changing the EE cycle rate to 60% feels pretty good. The emulator CPU cycle rate is at 90%, so it could still be better, but after testing all the other options here, I can say this is actually the best setting for Soul Calibur 2. There's a frame rate of 45 FPS, and while this isn't anything particularly great, it now at least feels fast enough for casual play. If we change the EE cycle rate to 50%, the emulator CPU starts to feel really slow, and you can see it has the effect of skipping a lot of frames. Let's overclock the EE cycle rate and we'll start with 130%. Recall at normal settings the game was running too slow at 40 FPS. Overclocking doesn't seem to do much if the default emulated CPU speed was too fast for your processor. You want to slow the PS2 speed down, not make it faster. Here's 180% and it doesn't really seem to do much. Here's 300% and it actually feels a little bit slower than default settings. Let's talk about EE cycle skip and we'll start with an EE cycle rate of 100% and EE cycle skip with a mild underclock. And you can see already it feels like a frame skip.
This is the moderate underclock and you can see the game performing faster but skips more frames. If you look at the stats in the top right, G has less frames now with a moderate underclock. So I believe G means geometry or draw calls, but correct me if I'm wrong. But the CPU is sending less frames to the GPU. A maximum underclock means it skips a lot of frames and plays really fast. It's not very fun with a maximum underclock in Soul Calibur 2. If you use both a 50% EE cycle rate and a maximum EE cycle skip, the game still works but it's slow because of the 50% cycle rate and skips a lot of frames and I can't see anyone wanting to play this. All of this was with the toggle frame rate limit on, meaning that the game is still capped to 50 FPS. For Soul Calibur 2, I believe it plays best with the frame rate limit on, however there may be some games where you want to turn the frame rate limit off and have an unlimited frame rate. In Soul Calibur 2, the animations are tied to 60 FPS, so once you have a much higher frame rate, the animations play too quickly. So now I'll show you the effects with the frame rate limit off. The default settings results is of course 40 FPS. At 75%, the CPU is under 100%, so there's no difference here to frame rate limit on. It's the same at 60%. At 50% the CPU is over 100% and video frames is now showing 65 FPS and the game plays faster. With EE cycle skip and a mild underclock it's the same with the frame rate limit on. On a moderate underclock there's less geometry calls because of the cycle skips. CPU running at 120% and it feels really fast. With a maximum underclock, the CPU is at 150% and the frame rate is at 75 FPS and feels really fast. So I hope that helped you understand the underclocking settings in Ether SX2. If not, feel free to watch the video again or comment below and I'll try to help you as best as I can. That's going to be it for this one. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one.